In the beginning, Yuya heads to the door of the second world, but hesitates after recalling Owen's warning about the darkest region, a dangerous forest filled with powerful monsters. Yuya opens the door and enters, marking the culmination of his journey. In the forest, Yuya searches for the formidable monster but finds nothing, causing him to doubt Owen's words. However, he hears a cry for help and discovers a weaker monster being attacked by a fearsome creature. Yuya rushes to the injured monster's aid. The powerful monster has a level of 20,000 which worries Yuya. He prepares to fight but before he can act, the monster crushes the injured creature. Yuya realizes that he didn't need to intervene as the monster was not as strong as he thought. Yuya reflects on his own growth, recalling his initial encounter with a powerful orc and how he learned to use weapons. He administers a healing potion to the injured monster, forming a bond with it. The monster guides Yuya to where his parents' books are located. Yuya names the monster Knight and returns home, brushing its fur with a newfound friendliness. Later, he shares the news of his new pet with his friends at school, who are excited and curious about Yuya's pet. Cade is particularly interested and asks if Yuya has pictures of Knight. Yuya explains that he doesn't have a phone and has never heard of one. Cade informs him about the pet shop and animal hospital locations, offering to accompany him. Yuya agrees and they make plans to go together. Cade calls it their date, and in the next scene, they visit the pet shop and select accessories for Knight. Yuya also mentions that Knight seems to be waiting for him, and he introduces Cade to his new pet. They return home and Yuya uses a grooming brush on Knight, enjoying the bonding experience. He reflects on his own level and growth, feeling that he has room for improvement. In the real world, Yuya and Knight go to school together. Yuya shares that he adopted Knight, and his friends express their excitement about the new addition to his family. Cade, in particular, is enthusiastic about the news. Miu, a fashion model, shows interest in Yuya and Knight. Yuya introduces Cade to Miu and tells her about Knight. Miu and her friends join their group, and Yuya feels a connection with Miu. As they chat, an unknown girl approaches, and Yuya's friends explain that she is another model, Miu. The group interacts, and Miu shows interest in Yuya and Knight. They spend time together, and Yuya and Miu exchange glances. Miu eventually leaves in a car, and Yuya and Kaid continue their conversation about her. Kaid asks if Yuya and Miu are dating, but Yuya downplays their connection. Kaid reassures Yuya that he is worthy of dating Miu. In a parallel storyline, a thief steals a purse from an elderly woman and runs away. Knight tries to make the woman laugh, and Yuya intervenes, successfully stopping the thief. The police are called, but the thief escapes. Kaid grows closer to Yuya, expressing her gratitude for saving her twice. The thief is handed over to the police, and Yuya and Knight return to the second world to continue their adventures. In the second world, Yuya and Knight defeat various monsters together. They encounter a crystal-like monster with a higher level, but Yuya manages to defeat it. They find valuable items and a portable device for creating baths. Yuya tests the device but gets soaked unexpectedly. Deciding to explore further another day, they return home. Yuya enjoys using the device at home and has fun. They encounter a fast-moving monster named Needle Roller and defeat it. Yuya checks his stats and skills and notices a strange man living openly in the area. As Yuya explores, he finds a skeleton and a book titled The Book of Sage, which he begins to read with fascination. It reveals the previous owner's mastery of magic, martial arts, and swordplay, even the chance to become a god but refusing. Yuya becomes concerned about people fearing his newfound power. The book advises him to make friends to ease their fear. The book imparts magical knowledge to Yuya, but he realizes he lacks the necessary magical pathways. Sage grants Yuya this ability, cautioning him to use it wisely. Yuya absorbs an abundance of magical knowledge, falling unconscious. Knight, concerned, is reassured by Yuya. Yuya thanks Sage for the newfound abilities and wishes him peace. Yuya returns home and learns about magic's dependence on imagination and magical energy. He practices and successfully manipulates magical energy. Knight also senses Yuya's magical energy. Yuya re-enters the book and learns to conjure objects using his imagination. He tests his magic with friends, breaking a tree with water magic. Meanwhile, King is furious that Yuya has proposed to Lexia, his daughter. In Yuya's class, they prepare for an off-campus study. Yuya joins a group with Kaid, Akira, and Rinkanza. They shop for camping gear, and Yuya's friends join, with Kaiori drawing attention. Yuya learns about Kaiori's high social status. At an arcade, Yuya impresses his friends with his skills in winning prizes. 
Kaori accompanies them, and Yuya's friends appreciate her friendly attitude. Yuya's friends invite Akira, but he declines due to other commitments. The group shops and enjoys themselves. They play arcade games and Yuya wins prizes for everyone, strengthening their bond. Kaori and Yuya's relationship becomes more comfortable. The group splits up, with the girls heading to the 13th floor to shop and the boys going for coffee. A wire in a game machine disconnects, unnoticed. The mall's alarm goes off, and a fire is announced on the 10th floor. Yuya worries about the girls and attempts to rescue them. Yuya uses his magic to protect himself and reaches the 13th floor, where he finds the girls unconscious. He saves Kaori but struggles to save everyone in one go. He decides to break a hole in the mall's wall to aid their escape. Yuya's friends worry about him as the firefighters fail to rescue the girls. Yuya eventually succeeds in rescuing everyone, and they reunite safely outside. Kaori's father thanks Yuya, and the brooch he gave Kaori is returned. Yuya reflects on the importance of family and bonds. In another world, a girl with divine powers seeks to destroy her world. A talking rabbit realizes her intentions and plans to pass on his technique to someone else to stop her. Yuya, using his magical abilities, transported himself to a dense forest. There he embarked on a journey of self-discovery and adventure. His magic allowed him to envision and manifest the places he desired to visit. To his amazement, these mental images became reality, leading him to his current location, a mysterious forest. In this enchanted forest, Yuya contemplated the potential of his newfound magical powers. He realized that he could navigate the world by simply envisioning his destination. However, there was a limitation. He could only teleport to places he had previously visited. Yuya's curiosity led him deeper into the forest. Inside a small cave, he encountered two menacing monsters that immediately set upon him with aggression. Fortunately, Yuya's magical companion, Knight, came to his rescue, dispatching the monsters and yielding valuable loot. Inspecting the newfound items, Yuya was astounded by their extraordinary properties. But as they prepared to leave, Yuya remembered his upcoming campus trip. This revelation saddened Knight, who ran off into the forest. Understanding Knight's desire for seclusion, Yuya followed him. Upon reaching Knight, Yuya realized that his companion wanted to remain hidden. Yuya too used his magic to turn invisible. It was during this time that they observed a wounded girl being besieged by a horde of monsters. Driven by a sense of duty, Yuya prepared to intervene. However, Knight restrained him. As the girl fought valiantly with her mysterious thread-like weapon, she vanished leaving behind a goblin that bore the girl's weapon and dispatched the remaining attackers. Yuya was left bewildered by the girl's incredible abilities. More goblins soon arrived, but a brutal attack sent her crashing into a tree, rendering her unconscious. Seizing the opportunity, the monsters closed in, intending to devour her. Without hesitation, Yuya leaped into the fray, aided by night. Together, they defeated the goblins, but their victory was short-lived as even more formidable goblins appeared. These new adversaries used a potent weapon known as the Divine Whip, which incapacitated them all at once and obliterated the goblins. Yuya marveled at the weapon's incredible power, unaware of its capabilities until that moment. Knight and Yuya decided to take the unconscious girl with them, aiming to nurse her back to health. Upon regaining consciousness, the girl was initially startled by Yuya's presence, but quickly accepted his assistance. Yuya offered her a magical herb, which miraculously healed her injuries. Grateful, the girl introduced herself as Luna and expressed her gratitude to Yuya. Their conversation revealed that Yuya was training in the forest, just like Luna. Luna, impressed by Yuya's strength, asked him to stay and train with her. Yuya, initially hesitant, agreed, recognizing the importance of keeping Luna safe. They embarked on a rigorous training regimen, with Luna teaching Yuya valuable skills. Their training made them stronger and closer. Luna's determination to improve was unwavering, driven by her secret mission. She wished to become even stronger, and Yuya decided to support her until he had to leave for his campus trip. As their last day of training approached, they trained diligently together. Luna surprised Yuya by allowing him to speak first, a change from her usual talkative demeanor. She expressed her gratitude for Yuya's help and friendship, claiming that her time with him was like a precious treasure. However, Yuya, unaware of Luna's intentions, innocently pointed out that her towel had fallen, leading to an amusing and slightly embarrassing moment between them. In the evening, Yuya and Kaede return after a successful fishing trip. Katie and Rin are amazed that Yuya caught all the fish by hand. 
and Rin praises Yuya's athletic abilities. Yuya notices Akira lying on the ground and asks what happened. Akira explains that Rin helped him by having Yuya taste vegetables and mushrooms to check if they were poisonous, and then used him as bait to scare away bears. Yuya questions why they didn't consult a teacher before eating. Akira did it to see happiness among his friends, and Yuya realizes Akira is a true friend. Yuya uses his magic to check Akira's health and confirms he's not poisoned, relieving him. Yuya decides to confront Akira about his actions. Yuya's team gathers various food items, but no one knows how to cook. Sawada suggests they consult their teacher again to check the items. The scene shifts to the students eating while teachers inspect the ingredients. Kori writes to Yuya about their team's progress and expresses her enjoyment. Kori's teammates call her, and she bids farewell to Yuya. Akira approaches Yuya about Kori and expresses his jealousy, causing a scene. Rin informs Yuya that Kori is the chairman's daughter and praises her beauty and personality. Yuya agrees with Rin, and the scene transitions to them preparing food. Sawada checks Ma'am's stool and finds it perfect, ensuring their team avoids any poisonous items. Yuya is designated as the cook, and everyone points fingers at him, making him nervous. Yuya accepts the challenge, motivated by the prospect of a bonus. Night falls, and Yuya cooks for everyone, with his teammates watching in anticipation. They taste the food, and everyone praises its deliciousness, making Yuya happy. Sawada provocatively suggests Yuya should marry her, causing tension, but it's all in jest. Yuya's team relaxes, and Sawada expresses her happiness at their success. The next day, Yuya uses teleportation magic to reach the knight's home and feeds him. Yuya enjoys making people happy with his food. Then they prepare to meet the king. Yuya confronts monsters in the jungle and his skills impress everyone. They encounter a talking rabbit, and Yuya receives a unique helmet as a gift. Yuya wears it with pride. Suddenly Luna, a girl with sinister intentions, tries to harm Lexia. Yuya intervenes and saves Lexia, revealing Luna's plan. Luna is incapacitated, and Yuya explains the situation to Lexia. Yuya thanks Lexia for her support and takes Luna home for treatment. Lexia decides to stay with Yuya to uncover Luna's true intentions. Back at Yuya's house, Yuya lays Luna safely in bed, and Lexia expresses her concern for him. Yuya reassures Lexia and appreciates her support. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care.